I feel this is going to be a challenging year for uh, for Christians. We were talking about this this morning a little bit in our meeting that we have. Um, There's so many things going on in this state that we is overwhelming us, you know, with with all the, the way schools are run today, way a lot of things in this state being run. Um, we lose, we're Christians are losing their rights, um, and this year is going to be a year I really feel that if if me you all of us, when the opportunity comes up and we're being challenged, as Christians, we're going to have to face it and, and stand our grounds because we're losing it every day. Um, other people can gather and get to be strong. Christians, for some reason, don't they do a lot of talking, but not enough action. And I am as if it's fault with that, just like anybody else is. All I can do is encourage people is be strong and be forward. I've done this verse for a call of worship once before. And when I was going over trying to figure out what needs to be said today, and, and this came to me. And uh, this is the this is the time that we, in God's house, we can worship our God. And we can worship Him loud. We can sing praises, and He hears nothing but great music from some of our voices. Some voices are not too good. So I encourage everybody, at least here in our house, let's be strong and let's praise our Lord. Psalms 96, 1 through 4. Please stand. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations. His marvelous deeds among all people. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise, he is to be feared above all gods. Lord, just give us the strength through this day that we need to know that you're there, you're behind us, and you're pushing us, and sometimes push a little harder because we need that. Lord, and thank you for this sunshine. What a glorious morning of what a night it turned into such a beautiful day. Blessing each and every one of these folks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Why do you turn into wine? Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. None like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, our soon and power, our God, our God. Shine out of the ashes, we 
rise There's no one like you None like you I got us greater I got us stronger Got you a higher than any other I got us healer Awesome and power on God I got yeah, I got us greater I got us stronger Got you higher than any other I got us healer Awesome and power on God I got God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if I got us with us, then what could stand against? And if I got us for us, then who could ever stop us? And if I got us with us, then what could stand against? Oh, oh, oh. what could stand? I got us greater, I got us stronger, got you higher than any other. I got a cedar, awesome and power I got. I got, yeah, I got us greater, I got us stronger, got you higher than any other. I got a cedar, awesome and power I stop us and if I got us with us then what can stand against oh, oh, oh. what can stand against oh, oh, oh. I got us greater I got us stronger God, you are higher than any other. I got a healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Rock of ages, clap for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flow. Me of sin, the double cure. See from wrath and make me pure. commands should my passion never fade and my efforts are been weighed all for sin could not atone you must save and you alone rock of ages no one takes your life yet to die that I might live cast the Rock of ages, you have paid the price. You accept to cover me. Let me hide myself in me.
nothing in my hand I bring Simply to the cross I cling Naked come to thee for dress Helpless look to thee for grace Wretched to the fount to fly Watch me, Savior, or I die Rock of ages No one takes your life Yet you died that I might live Cause the grace you freely give Rock of ages Self in me. And well, I draw my final breath. I'll rest upon your grace. Good morning, everybody. Please take a minute to greet one another. One minute. One, surely. One. Yeah. Me too. That's all. I, yeah. Yeah, it's all patchy. Yeah. Yep. That's what I would look like if I grew my back. So I. Uh. You know, they do have product for that, right? It's okay, Jordan, we can go long. <laughs> You're the one that sets the timer for the roast at home. No pressure. <laughs> it's on. I'm just keeping it away from my chin. 
Welcome again, everybody. It's good to see you all. Uh, great. It's, it's funny to see everybody not in one section. We won't mention that whole area. <laughs> Guess we're trying to keep our body heat together. Uh, Happy New Year again. Um, welcome to everybody. If you're new, special welcome. Uh, in the seat back in front of you, we have some uh, information in the trifold. Uh, with all that's going on, we have... Um, the website, if you're, are we, we're online, right? Yeah, it's the new year. It's not Christmas Eve. So uh, if you're online with us, you can look that up. If you go home or you got your phone, it's online there too. If you have any questions, please uh, make a note of it on your communication card. Uh, let one of us know who are up and around uh, afterward or give the office a call. We'll be happy to answer any questions about what's going on. And if you're a guest, at the very back, uh, bring your communication card to us. We'll give you a, a gift for uh, just being here, with, worshiping with us today, answer any questions you may have, and uh, just say hi. Uh, let's see, did the information thing. Awana is going to be returning January 4th. So for all the kids, this place is going to be full again on Wednesday nights. Um, and for those of you doing Monday morning, Tuesday morning Bible study, We'll be set pulling chairs up again. Um, coming soon is if if you were in Scouts, it was the Pinewood Derby and the one. It's the the Grand Prix Derby. If you remember doing that, they are going to have the Pinewood cars for sale for them. And if you want to uh, sponsor one of those kids having a car, put a I can't remember if it's four or five bucks. Uh, put a little extra money in the offering or put it in an envelope. Uh, so the kids that may not be able to afford it can have one of those. Uh, we still have a couple of ours. I remember mine looked mauled when I was a kid. But uh, it, it's always fun for the kids to have an opportunity to, to send those cars down. It's a blast of a time for them. So think about that when, uh, when that comes, comes by to, uh, for the kids to have that opportunity. Uh, men's breakfast is coming up on the 14th of January. So uh, I don't think there's a bad time to have eggs just a good thing. So come on out, um, join us. If you have any friends that are in the area or uh, visiting, please have them come out. It's a great time to have a Bible study, to enjoy some fellowship, uh, and uh, have some food. Spam. It's food. Amen. We're here for the food. What spam is? <laughs> Oh, man, that's a good one, Steve. There's a filter for spam. I like that one. Um, January 15th, the, ne the following day after the men's breakfast, there's a congregational meeting. A medi oh, I'm sorry. Men's breakfast is at 9 o'clock here. Um, so, uh, and I forgot to mention, Awana is going to be at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock? 6.30 here on Wednesday. So I, I didn't have that on my notes. I forgot. Uh, immediately after the 15 January service, uh, we're going to have a congregational meeting, uh, not required to be a member for it, but there's going to be food there, a time of uh, fellowship, of celebrating what God's doing uh, in us, through us, uh, and all our imperfectness and how he does it's still amazing. So please plan on staying around afterwards that day. Join us for, uh, for that time and if you're having a meeting with that or a uh, meeting as well, Jordan will get up and do a soliloquy. Uh, ladies paint night is January 30th so plan on that ladies it's at 6 p.m. Uh, so uh, plan on that here and uh, to bounce off what Cliff said this morning um, if you are not involved in a small group uh, before the service uh, there's always uh, things on the slide uh, in the trifold is some information about the small groups to to think that the entire vein of Satan's existence is to take us from what God wants to do. Every day of the week, there is something going on in a small group in our church or at somebody's house. Please get plugged in and be involved. Um, thankfully and amazingly, technology, you can be involved in a small group online, uh, whether it's through us or not through us. Uh, make sure you are being encouraged and saturating yourself in God's word to uh, counteract all that. Um, Jeff's gone, and I don't know where he's at, some boat somewhere. Um, but um, please.
please let us know if you want to get involved in a small group in your communication card because it's vitally important to uh, your spiritual walk and all that you're involved in. And uh, we want to make sure we're supporting you in any challenge you have, any praises you have to uh, spur you on. Uh, with that, after the service, uh, if you have any questions, uh, we'll have some leaders up front or around. Please ask one of us, say hi, let us know. We'll be happy to pray with you, celebrate with you. And uh, that's uh, all the announcements. Uh, please, uh, let's uh, bow and pray for our offering and the remainder of our service. Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, uh, this fantastic opportunity to start the new year celebrating, uh, singing praises to you, worshiping you, studying your word. Father, thank you for loving us, for sending your son to die for us. Father, thank you for this opportunity to gather um, as we now give uh, for all the activities uh, that, that go on here today and, and beyond today, for our missionaries uh, here and abroad, for uh, uh, the work that's done in our youth groups and our small groups and our paint nights and our breakfast, that we would uh, be an encouragement and draw near to you. Lord, we, we now joyfully give of all you have given us, that we may uh, honor you, expand your kingdom, uh, that more may know you. We pray uh, for this offering and the use you will use. You will use it in uh, far beyond our understanding. And we celebrate that with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. 
Shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine. But God, who calls me here below, will be forever mine. Be forever. A strong, a perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and bleeds for me. My name is graven on his ends, my name is written. And bid me thence depart. No tongue can bid me thence depart. When Satan tempts me to despair, tells me of the guilt within a word I know. God, I see him there, lead and into all my sins. Because the sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is 
counted free for God the justice satisfied to look on him and pardon me to look on him and pardon me Righteousness, the great unchangeable I am, the King of glory and of grace. One with himself, I cannot die. My soul and purchase with his blood. My life is here with Christ on high. Christ my Savior and my God, with Christ my Savior and my God. Savior and my God. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Hey. I feel like I haven't seen you guys since last year. <laughs> oh, I love that one. Hey, this is the first day of the year, not just the first uh, Sunday of the month. Uh, and the first Sunday of the month is when we celebrate communion. And so what a special treat we get to have the first day of the year, uh, being able to gather together as God's people and celebrate uh, communion together. Obviously, there are some people who uh, maybe had a little too much fun last night, stayed up late, and couldn't get up this morning. Uh, so, if you're joining us online, uh, you can go and gra- like Jesus used bread and wine because they were common things that would have just been on the table. It's okay if you don't have juice and bread to to go grab. Grab something that's common at your house uh, and, and join us uh, in communion together. Uh, but we are going, I'm going to pray over the elements, we'll pass them out, and then we will take them uh, together here in the room and together with those who are online. Sound good? Excellent. If the ushers could come forward as I pray for the elements. Father, Son, and Spirit. We come before you humbly as your servants, as your people, gathered here in this place to worship you. Father, we thank you for creating the universe, bringing all things into existence by your very word. God, for the work that you have done in our lives, uh, creating each and every one of us uniquely, understanding every single little minutia, every single detail, the number of hairs on our heads. God, we thank you, Father, for the work you have done in our lives. Jesus, we thank you for the work you accomplished on the cross. And you gave your life so that we might find true life in you. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you did not leave us in our own mess, in our own brokenness, but that you decided to come into this world and live alongside us as 
a human to walk with us, talk with us, experience all of our difficulties, all of the struggles that are common to man. We thank you, Lord, for your work in the past and your continued work in our lives. Spirit, we thank you for coming into our hearts and sanctifying us, for drawing out all of the, the mess, all of the brokenness, all of the junk that we have hidden away in our hearts that uh, was given to us in our childhood that we have taken upon ourselves. Spirit, we thank you for rooting all of that out and replacing it with your love, your light, your goodness, your peace. We thank you for the work you already have accomplished and the work that you will continue to do as we press ever onward toward the goal that you have placed in front of us. Father, Son, and Spirit, we come before you this morning knowing that you are present with us as we take communion together. Lord, bless these elements, bless the people who take them. We love you, Lord, and Jesus, it's because of you that we pray. Amen. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is given for you. As often as you take it, take it in remembrance of me. Let's take and eat together. And in the same way, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he blessed it and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant which is in my blood shed for you. As often as you drink it, drink it in remembrance of me. Let's take and drink together. Lord Jesus, we remember you. 
we reflect on your presence here with us this morning. Not your physical presence, but your spiritual presence with us, knowing that Jesus, as you promised, you are with us even at the end of the age. And we also look forward to the future when your physical presence, when you will physically return here and call us all to you and bring us fully, completely, utterly into your kingdom. We love you, Lord Jesus. It's because of you that we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, if we haven't met before, hi. My name is Jordan. I'm the lead pastor here at Antelope Springs. Um, let's see. I just I have a couple of things I want to mention as kind of pseudo announcements. Uh, first of all, next Sunday we're going to be doing uh, some baptisms, so that's going to be fun. If you uh, believe in Jesus and you have not been baptized, come talk to me about baptism because you should be baptized. That's that's something that Jesus calls us to do as believers. And you don't. I mean, the the cool thing about baptism is you don't have to be like, you know, some sort of spiritual guru to be baptized. It's actually one of the first things we're supposed to do. So it's not like you get to be level three of Christian and then you get baptized. It's like you believe in Jesus, go get baptized. So if you believe in Jesus and you've not been baptized, come talk to me. Uh, and we can either get you set up for next Sunday or a future week. It, it can happen. We, we can put water in this tank at any point in time. So uh, let's, let's do that. But we're going to be celebrating that uh, next week and it's going to be a fun time. Second, for the congregational meeting on the 15th. Uh, again, you don't have to be a member to attend, uh, but you, in order to vote on the voting items, you have to be a member. But you can still attend the meeting and have fun, hang out with us. Um, if you know that you're not going to be able to be here on the 15th for that meeting, we're going to be recording that. Uh, so just get in contact with the office. You can email office at antelopespringschurch.org, and we will send you, once we have it recorded, we will send you a link to that video so that you can know what things am I voting on? How am I supposed to, like all that stuff will be there. Sound good? Cool, all right. So let's get into what we're getting into this morning. This is uh, the first day of the year. And it is going to be an exciting year. I've, I've been thinking about this year for a while, and yes, I am already thinking about Christmas 2023. So uh, we have lots of stuff that is planned for this year. This is kind of a unique year. Not only is this, uh, you know, this is the first Sunday and it is the first day of the year, but also because January 1st is a Sunday, December 31st at the end of the year is also going to be a Sunday. We actually have 53 Sundays this year. So, yeah, we're going to have lots of church and lots of fun fellowshipping with one another. <laughs> it's going to be great. Uh, so we have lots of big plans uh, because the kind of uniqueness of this year and of this day, it got me going, uh, thinking in my mind, uh, if we're going to be having church on the first day of this year, what should we go through? What better time to go through and look at the first day of of creation. So this morning we're going to be looking at Genesis chapter 1, the first five verses, that first day of creation. Uh, and, and it kind of got me thinking as I solidified that, I went, what else can we go through? Uh, and God kind of played around with that in my mind. And so what we're doing is for these next uh, seven weeks, we're going to be going through a series of firsts. And we're going to be looking each week at a different first thing in the Bible and what God has to say about that for us. So again, this morning we're going to be looking at the first day of creation, uh, but before we actually dive into God's word together, let's talk a little bit about organization. Who still has their Christmas decorations up? Uh, <laughs> a lot of us. We still have the lights in here. These will be coming down this week, don't worry. Uh, when you go and put your Christmas decorations away, though, historically, as you think back into the years, or if you already did it this year, you kind of realize that your past self was not as organized as your present self wishes they had been, right? 
And our present selves don't really want to do our future selves any favors either, right? Organization is very difficult, especially around the holidays. Uh, things get hectic, we get stressed out, and there are some things that we just kind of push off to the side and let that be handled a different day. Uh, organization in our lives is very difficult to maintain. And yet our God maintains organization over the entirety of the universe. If you want a glimpse of the raw power of our God, think about how difficult it is to keep all the things we have control over in order, then multiply that by every single person in the world, every single planet in the solar system, every single star in the universe, and every single planet system, all of that stuff, God has control over that, and he's not struggling to maintain control. Our God is powerful. He is good, and he has this entire universe. He maintains uh, the motion of the entire universe, keeps it all going out of his raw power, his love, his mercy, and his goodness. Our God is strong, and he is for us. So we're going to, again, look at the first day of creation. We're going to see some of that raw power come out as God speaks the universe into existence. But first, let's pray. Father God in heaven, your name is holy. Lord, we desire to see your kingdom here on earth. We want to see as as you told us, your kingdom was at hand. The kingdom of heaven is near, is drawing close. God, you have opened up the gates for us through your son, Jesus. You have allowed us access into your kingdom. So we ask to see your kingdom more and more. We want to see, God, your will being done here on earth, just as it is in heaven. Lord, we ask that every single day you give us exactly what we need to walk in the ways that you've placed before us, to walk the path that you've given us. Lord, help us to forgive others when they sin against us, just as you have forgiven us for sinning against you. And don't allow us to fall to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, because Jesus, yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And it's because of you that we pray. Amen. So right at the beginning, Genesis chapter 1. If you're having a hard time finding Genesis is the first book in the Bible. <laughs> Genesis chapter 1, starting with verse 1, says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I know if you've been in church your whole life like I have, you've probably heard this passage preached on many, many times. I probably don't have much to add to what you've already heard, but if this is the first time you're going through this, welcome. We got a lot to go through. <laughs> uh, we're going to get a little bit of a Hebrew lesson uh, because this is a beautiful, beautiful passage in Hebrew. Genesis 1 1 in Hebrew says, Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamayan ve'et ha'aretz. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. First, we have that phrase, in the beginning, God. God created. Before time, itself began, God was there. How? I don't know. How does something exist? How does any, even like a non-sentient being, how does anything exist before time itself begins? Before the beginning, how does something exist? I don't know. The Bible is not trying to answer how God came to be, how God existed before anything else, before time itself. What the Bible is telling us is that he was there. Before time, before any single thing was in existence, before anything had begun, God was. And he said, let's start this. In the beginning, God 
created. God created the heavens. So heavens, uh, is shamayim in Hebrew. This is a plural word. And shamayim, uh, we always see that in Hebrew as plural. So some translations will have, just like NIV has, uh, God created the heavens. They will put that S there to make it plural in English. But other translations will go, well, yeah, but it kind of means it's, it's plural in form, but it means a singular thing. And so they will just put heaven. God created heaven and earth. Uh, and you will see, even in various places uh, in the Old Testament, Shemayim is used, and NIV will actually translate it just as heaven, because that makes more sense for English. It is this plural form word with a singular thought. Just like the vastness of the universe, everything that is above uh, and outside of earth, all of the stars in the sky, there's so many of it. It is the heavens, literally, but it is one thought of the entire universe heaven. We also see this in the word water. At the end of verse 2, you see uh, NIV has uh, uh, the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters because the word for water in Hebrew, mayim, is also plural in form but singular in thought. And if you think about that, that kind of makes sense because how do you have a single water? Water itself is lots of waters put together. You can put it in one vessel, in one container, and then you can split it in half and have two waters, but it's the same water. It's this idea that it's, it's plural in thought, but, but singular in essence. And so we have uh, heavens and we have waters seen in this passage. There is another word that is plural in form and yet singular, singular in thought that is within this, and it is the word Elohim, God. Elohim, every single time uh, Elohim is translated from Hebrew into English, it is either talking about God and written singular God, or it is talking about, for example, like uh, Egyptian gods. And that one always gets the S, and it gets a little lowercase g because it's not a real God, right? Elohim, it is plural in form and yet singular in thought because our God is three and yet one. Father, Son, Spirit, the Trinity. Three persons and yet one God. We see even in the very first verse of the Bible, this Trinitarian thought of our God who is three and yet one, who is plural and yet one. And we see that also echoed in the heavens and in the waters and in creation. Our God is amazing. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, ha'aretz. That word in Hebrew is interesting because the vast majority of times it is used in the Old Testament, we translate it into English as the word land rather than the word earth, which is very important to a Hebrew, a Jewish audience, because what is the land that God often talked about with the Israelites? It is the promised land. It is the same word that is used there. So for a Jewish audience reading this, they see in the beginning, not only did God create the heavens, but he also created the land. We have this hint of the promise that God would eventually bring this land to his people, that at the very beginning, God was preparing the land for them, but it is not ready yet. Because in verse 2, we are told that the land was formless and empty. It was void and and without shape. And the waters covered the surface of the land and the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. It's not until the uh, fourth day of creation. One, two, three. No, third day of creation that God brings forth the land out of the waters and makes dry land on there. Until then, the, the entire earth was just covered in waters as God was creating. Water in Hebrew literature often signifies chaos. So metaphorically saying that the Spirit of God hovered over the waters was like saying God encompassed the chaos as he was going to, uh, preparing to bring order out of the chaos. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. 
And God said, verse 3, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. That starts a a pattern, a, a rhythmic pattern. God said, let there be, and there was, and it was good. There was morning and evening, the whatever day. Over and over again, God said, let there be, and there was. It was good. There was morning and evening, whichever day it was. We see in creation this kind of poetic structure. In fact, uh, if you remember back to this last year, we looked at a lot of poetry. How do we uh, read poetry in the Bible? It's always signified by the little indentations, uh, how we have the first line that's not indented and every other line is kind of indented that goes with it. Look at chapter one of Genesis and see what they did there. It's entire paragraphs, little blocks of prose that are all offset by indentation. And that is because there's little arguments that go on over whether or not this is merely a poetic kind of thing as God created, uh, uh, it's, it's being expressed in this poetic language, or if this is historical fact and should be read as simply a narrative in prose. And so most translations like the NIV kind of split the difference and they go, let's do both. It's prose and poetry. Here you go. We're going to offset it by indents and put it in paragraph form. Don't be mad at us. Just be happy. It's the Bible. God creates in this very poetic way. Even the the rhythm of how he creates the first day uh, brings darkness and light, separates those. And on the fourth day, God creates the sun and the moon to guide the, the day and the night, right? The second day. Uh, God separates the waters, the, the firmament. He creates the skies and the sea. On the fifth day, he creates birds and fish to fill the skies and the seas. On the third day, he brings forth dry land and vegetation. On the sixth day, he creates animals to fill the land, to eat the vegetation, and humans to rule over all of it. There's this very rhythmic pattern, this poetic uh, kind of symmetry between f- days one and three and days four through six, right? Right? And so we have this question of what actually happened here. Is this a literal account, a historical fact of how God created the universe in six literal 24-hour periods? Or is it all kind of poetic and it's meant to be a, a metaphor and, and maybe God uh, created over you know, periods of time or something? There are multiple ways to look at this, and I think... Most of them, provided they begin with the fact that God created the universe, I think most of those are Christian in thought. I have a particular place that I've landed on, and this is what I believe, and I will share that this morning. Uh, But before I share that, I want to say I don't think that if we come to different conclusions about whether this is historical fact or uh, a, an extreme allegory or something like that, I think if we come to different conclusions on that, we can still worship God together because we're starting with the basis that God created the universe. Our salvation does not depend on whether God used uh, evolution and, and things like that over a long period of time or whether God created over six literal days. Our salvation does not depend on that. In fact, that is a question that God never asked us. It's an answer he hasn't given us. He's just said, Here, here's the story. Here is uh, the information about me. God says, I want you to know who I am. You don't need to know all the intricate little tiny details about how I work and and what things happen. You guys, we believe in a God who has three persons and yet one God. If that makes sense in your mind, I don't know how you make sense of that. We can kind of wrap our minds around it and we can kind of feel okay with it. But as we look deeply into the fact that God is three and yet one, That doesn't make sense. And so if we're looking at these things and we're going, uh, well, but I don't know whether God created in six literal days or if he used some other, like, there's things about God we don't understand, and that's okay. 
But the things he shows us, the things he reveals to us about himself, those are important. Those are things that we should cling to. So the fact that God created the universe, that's the important thing. Amen? Amen. So what do I think? For me, it makes sense and it lines up with my view of God, that our God is creative and poetic, and I think he would have, it's very God-like to create the universe in six literal days in this very poetic and beautifully laid out way, and then to point to that and say, hey, check it out, this is what I did. It makes less sense to me that God would go use some other way and then point to this and say, and this is how I could have done it in a beautiful way. That doesn't make sense to me. But the, the big reason for me why I currently land on a six literal 24-hour period creation kind of model is the, uh, the concept of Adam and Eve. Like, I don't see how in, in kind of like an evolutionary uh, way how there's a literal Adam and Eve there. And it seems to me that it's important that there was a literal Adam and Eve who brought sin into this world, just as there was a literal Jesus, uh, a literal man named Jesus, who brought forgiveness for sin to the world. So that's kind of where I stand in my reasoning for that. And if you want to talk more, we can talk all day about that. Uh, that's, that's a fun conversation for me, um, but it's for another time. We won't go into all the details here. But our God created, and he separated on that first day. He separated the light from the darkness. What we see in this first day of creation is God brought the universe into existence, as he brought the beginning we see that God hovers over the waters. He hovers over the chaos. And he separates light from darkness. Our God is a God of order. He keeps everything organized. Out of the chaos, he brings order. And when there is darkness, he draws a limit to that darkness. We live in a dark world because our God has allowed dominion of the world has allowed Satan to have dominion over the world for a time. He has allowed the chaos of, of the waters metaphorically there. But he covers that chaos. And he brings order out of that chaos. And where there is darkness, he has drawn a limit for that. Our God has reached into the darkness and he has brought us out of the darkness and into his light. And he has called us to be agents of light so that we, as we live for God with our words, with our actions, with our temperaments, with everything about us, we can go and show this world that there is a limit to the darkness. There is a line drawn that separates the darkness from the light. And we are able to show that, shine that light out into the darkness. It is easy when we are surrounded by darkness, it is easy for us to become overwhelmed and overcome and just go, you know what, I'm just going to go with the flow and, and be a part of the darkness. But our God has called us to be agents of light. As we settle into this new year, as we get back into our work routines, our routines with family as we're coming into this, let's remind ourselves to be agents of light, that we are not overcome by darkness, but that God has called us into his light. And with our words, rather than speaking war and speaking attacks, we can speak peace. We can speak kindness. We can show God's love with our actions. Rather than being aggressive with people, and trying to, to wrestle into uh, uh, what it is that we want right now. Let's bring peace. Let's bring order. Let's be the ones who, who show the gentleness that Jesus showed, even as he was being arrested and, and being pulled in all kinds of different directions. In our relationships, let's forgive radically not insist upon, well, I'm right and you're wrong and you need to go and, and pay me penance and do this thing. Let's just forgive radically because our God forgave us radically, amen? Let's remember that we are agents of light. There is a border. There is a line drawn in the sand that God separates the darkness from the light and we are on the side of the light, amen?
Amen. Let's pray. God, once again, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that we can gather together in your name. That we can worship you in spirit and in truth. That we can love one another radically, wholeheartedly, sincerely. Lord, show us more and more what it means to experience your love and to shine your light, to shine your love out in this world because, God, there is so much hate. There is so much anger. There is so much bitterness. There is so much that is just ugly in this world. We want to see the beauty and the order that you have brought forth. God, we want to see your kingdom, this land that you have given us, that you have brought near to us. We want to see your light as, as we live in your kingdom and you are our light and we are your people, God. We want to see and understand how very, very good that is. We love you, Lord. Jesus, it's because of you that we pray. Amen.
We could not imagine. 